okay so uh, good evening everyone we will be starting our presentation session uh, we have nikhil birader with us and uh, yes nikhil you can uh, start your presentation yeah good evening sir now uh, i am nikhil birader from the java developers group and uh, today's my topic is the software development life cycle so this is the to today's agenda so we'll see the uh, what are the needs of these dlcs and why it is important introduction their stages modules and limitations so uh, why sdlc comes in a picture uh, what is the need behind these sdlcs so in the previous time uh, to develop a software without sdlc it will take a longer time so uh, sdlc gives a systematic and disciplined manner it it, it acts as a framework which gives a structured way to develop the softwares then it gives the clear understandings among the team representatives as we know all the softwares uh, are work uh, in a team so the client's requirements and all these uh, can be uh, done uh, throughout the sdlcs then it describes the entry and exit exit of the each phases as sdlc is working within various phases uh, it will uh, give the information about the entry and exit of each phase then it is easy to monitor the progress of the project so throughout the software and development process it's easier uh, with using the sdlc uh, the progress of the project then why uh, is the sdlc important so basically as we know it's a standardized framework so framework is nothing but which gives a structured way to organize your uh, softwares then it makes the project tracking and control easier so throughout the development of any software or project uh, it is easy to track the pro progress of that particular software and control are easier then it increases the speed of the development as it gives all uh, the necessary information in the structured manner then it give the speed of the development process increases then also uh, as it is a structured way it decreases the project risk also then uh, also it improves the client relations with the, with us then the goal behind the sdlc is uh, it is used to produce the superior software that meets the exceeds all the customer expectations and demands so as the customers or client uh, can demands of uh, any software or any product then uh, the goal behind the sdlc is to provide all the uh, requirements then establishing a project management structure to ensure that each system developed project is effectively managed throughout its life cycle so this is again another goal of the software development life cycle now coming to the introduction as we know the standard it is a standard process of the software development which gives various phases like designing development testing and maintenance of a software and it is a structured process that enables high quality softwares now uh, which are low cost and these all are the time bounded means can be done within a specified uh, time now these are the sdlc phases now first one is the requirement analysis then next is the defining then designing then coding then testing then after the testing it deployment and maintenance so coming to the each phase this is the requirement uh, analysis basically this uh, phase requires all the, uh, it gathers all the information uh, from, from the customers users and the stakeholders so basically what is the need uh, of the software then it gives us a clear understanding uh, about the scope of the projects the planning and risk management so as it uh, info gathers the all the information from stakeholders and customers then uh, requirement valid it also gives the thorough understanding about the requirement validations then third one is the design foundation so it will gives us a thorough understanding about what is the design foundation of the project then next one <clears throat> is the feasibility stage so it includes the total number of five feasibilities 
such as economical, operational, organizational, technical, and scheduled. So first one is the economical feasibility. So it will give whether the project is completed within the budget. Then the operational feasibility gives understanding whether the project can be solved within the existing proposed system user environments. Then organizational feasibility is nothing but it gives the can the project be handled uh, consistently throughout the uh, within the company. Then technical feasibility. So uh, can the problem solved within the uh, present computer systems and all other resource resources available in the company and scheduled feasibility is nothing but it will use the understanding about can the product or software be uh, within the time. Then uh, coming to the design phases, so it will identify the potential risk, then uh, performing a security risk assessment as uh, in the software development, a security is the most concerned uh, parameter, then uh, design parameter phase uh, gives understanding about the security risk assessment, then developing a conversion plan to migrate the current data into the newer system at some times. Now, uh, the current data should be migrated to the newer systems. Then it will be done in the design phases. Then determining all the uh, operating environments, then major subsystems and their inputs and outputs, and allocating the processes to resources. All these are done into the design phases. Now, the next phase is the coding phase. So, coding it is the longest uh, phase throughout the software development process, and it is the actual implementation of the phase. Basically, it includes a system design in IDE. Uh, IDE is nothing but the integrated development environment, uh, which should be all the uh, source code should be uh, in uh, that IDE. Then uh, the tasks uh, in this phase are divided into the units and modules. As we know, all the software development uh, systems works within the software developers work within the various teams. and the this uh, phase is divided into the various units or modules or within their uh, teams then for the for this purpose various languages are used for example java then php c++ or c sharp so by using these languages any software is developed and after the uh, all development process is done the then the testing uh, phase comes into the picture testing and deployment. So in this phase, the software is sent uh, to a testing environment where it is tested by test engineers. So we have the uh, testing environments such as uh, manual and uh, automation testing, where all the test engineers uh, test the uh, software which is developed by the developers. So that is are also called as QA, that is quality assurance and testing. So these teams may find some bugs uh, or the defects in the uh, software which has been developed by the developers. So which they communicate to the developers. So whenever they find a bug, then they will uh, communicate with the developers team and will resolve that issue. Then the development team uh, fixes that bugs and again send it to the QA team with the updated design of the system. So after all this testing is done, now it's actual time to deploy that project. So the product is ready for the delivery. So after the phases, there are some uh, SDLC models such as waterfall model, iterative model, then V-shaped and agile. So we'll see the four models today. So basically waterfall, it is the oldest, simplest and most structured model. It consists various stages within the inputs and outputs. So next here, the next stage is <clears throat> uh, can start with So next stage begin with the initial stage. So the output of the first stage is fed as input to the next stage. So all these 
stages are run one after another so whenever the one required one page is completed then it will move forward <clears throat> it has uh, various stages like requirements design implementations verifications and maintenance then uh, the pros of the waterfall models are it is easy to implement then all the phases are clearly defined in this model as we know it is uh, works on various uh, phases and all the phases are clearly defined so after that it works well in short projects so this is the advantage of the uh, waterfall model now coming to the cons so this model is not ideal for the complex project as it is designed for the shorter project it uh, may not be work well for the complex projects and it consumes a lot of time so time is, is again another issue in this model then iterative model so basically software development is done on small scale and here it is done within the iterations and within each iteration it will go through the design and development then again it is tested and again implemented so basically it uh, runs within the iterations so it has the pros like it is easy to measure the progress in this model then after this uh, it improves the risk management because high risk section can be handled first so in this uh, model the, the problems with the high risks are handled first and after that the another will run and it allows the customers to change requirements easily so it gives the advantage like we can change our requirements easily which cannot be done in the waterfall model and again it has the cons like it is not ideal for the small projects and it requires a lot of attention from the management so we require the continuous attention to this system then coming to the v shaped model so basically it is the extension of the waterfall model and the development and the validation phases organized in parallel way so the verification phases and validation phases are run in the parallel now it has pros like ideal for uh, small projects then simple model that can be used by developers then it promotes high discipline in software development then uh, coming to the cons uh, again it's not ideal for the complex projects as it handles the easy projects then it's difficult to change the functionality as it going to the testing phase so after the validation phase it's going to uh, validation and testing phases are run in parallel so it's difficult to change the functionality now coming to the agile model basically so it is the combination of incremental and iterative model and it uh, runs on various iterations within the time period of 2 to 3 months within the each iterations so basically the focus behind this model is the customer satisfactions and the adaptability so in every stage the cross functionality units such as planning requirement analysis designing building and testing so these uh, works then when each iteration is done then product so at each at each iteration the product is shown to the customers and stakeholders now coming to the pros it provides a realistic approach to the development of the software then it requires the minimum resources within the minimum resources it can be run very well then again it provides the greater flexibility to the software developers to use this model and uh, coming to the cons the, the final product depends on the customers so as uh, we have to show our output to the customers so the final product is depend on the customers and uh, according to them 
if uh, are there any changes in the software then it will be done then it does not generate the adequate documentations this is again another con of the model then coming to the limitations of the software development life cycle as it provides uh, various ways to develop the software it has the limitations too then it is difficult to estimate the actual cost of the entire project so sdlc ca cannot predict the overall cost of the entire project so it is one of its limitations another limitation is uh, it may leads to increase the cost of software development so whenever we uh, build uh, any software then it may lead to increase in the uh, cost of the software development then uh, sometimes the input of users may be limited so user limitation is there then the execution of the sdlc phase depends on various factors uh, such as customer requirements and availability of the funds so this is one once uh, a dependency that we can say to the sdlc more limitations so uh, coming to the conclusion the software development life cycle is a resourceful tool for developing high quality software products so it will uh, acts as a tool to develop the high quality softwares uh, which gives a structured manner to develop the various softwares then again this tool provide a framework for guiding the developers in the process of software development so basically it acts as a framework uh, which is a predefined codes uh, for guiding the developers in the uh, throughout the process of the software developments again a suitable sdlc model can be selected based on the customer requirements and the objectives of an organization so suitable model uh, there are various models of the so software development life cycle and uh, one of the model can be selected uh, which is based on the uh, customer requirements and the objective of the organization then the benefits of the sdlc in software development can be realized if developers understand the customer requirements and strictly follow the documented plan the benefits of the sdlc can be realized so there are uh, customers uh, requirements are there and the documented plan which should be uh, strictly followed by the developers so these are uh, these some references that i have referred so are there any questions thank you thank you sir thank you okay nikhil uh, so are you taking any questions hmm? hello uh, nikhil am i am audible yes sir yeah so are you taking any questions can i ask you some questions yes sir yeah so uh, nikhil uh, this software development life cycle okay. uh, is this cycle recurring or non recurring in nature the software development uh, cycle yeah recurring or non recurring in nature means uh, are you uh, talking about which context i'm talking about see uh, in your uh, explanation part there was a pictorial presentation of the uh, cycle which yes, yes. start which started with the uh, requirement requirement, requirement analysis and yes, then sir. ended on a maintenance part right yes, so sir. that's what i am asking ki, is this cycle recurring or non recurring sir actually i don't be or don't know the uh, correct but uh, i think that it just is... just take a minute and think about it let's say i uh, you are working on a project and uh, you have a team and then uh, you displayed this uh, flow chart in front of them it's on the seventh slide right can you just open the seventh slide yes sir right so require you tell them about the requirements and then you uh, display them all the necessary things then the designing part and everything and the last maintenance part right so i'm just yes. asking ki uh, uh, will this cycle ever end or not just a well uh, curious question okay, what so what is so, your opinion yeah it will end at the deployment stage so after okay. that the maintenance should be there uh, throughout the uh, software 
Okay, so that, uh, if are there any uh, further uh, requirements are there, then it should be modified on that. Uh, exactly. So basically, after maintenance, if let's say the, the developer feels like there should be something more in um, that I development know. part, right? So basically, there is uh, some requ uh, new arrival yeah, so, uh, of we can requirement. Add, or we can add, add the various uh, new features. Exactly. So basically, now you are adding uh, according to your requirement. Yes. Right. So basically, now you are again on the first step. Yes, sir. Right. So that's requiring. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's your answer. Yes, so you just need to think about the uh, process and uh, you can get your answer right there. So uh, yeah, that, that's what I wanted to ask about. And uh, see, your uh, presentation was very well structured. You mm -hmm. talked about the what exactly is SL, uh, SDLC is. Then you gave us the uh, model and then you talked about the limitations and you talked about each model, yeah. uh, which was very well explained. So you, I'm starting with uh, the need of the SDLC model. Yeah, the need and, is important. Exactly. So I will say that's what I'm saying. Your structural uh, presentation was uh, nice. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, see, when you started the presentation, uh, it's nice that you are talking about SDLC and what it is, what it is, and what does it do, and everything. But see, uh, every presentation should include a hook story. So when was this uh, SDLC uh, was uh, invented or yes, yes, where, yes. where do you see it being used in the real life uh, situation? Okay. Have you had have any experience uh, related to this topic? So th these things can be added to a good story part at the end, yes, at the start. So instead of jumping directly on the main topic, just start with these things. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. That's uh, yeah. yeah, right. So there is no uh, demo to it, right? No, sir. Actually, it, ha it has not demo. It's a uh, okay, okay. The tutorial representation and the okay, right. The right. models. The models, right? It was a thorough, thorough study of the right. topic. So you did include the conclusion part and the reference part. Yes. Uh, yes. Just uh, add your contact info at the end of the uh, thank you slide. Uh, which your information, sir? Your uh, Gmail account. Okay, so okay, if, if anyone has any questions, they can reach out to you. Yes, sir, we'll add that. Right. Uh, yeah, that's that's all from my side. Your presentation was very well uh, structured and the flow was very nice. Okay, thank you, sir. Right. Uh, so uh, since we don't have any more uh, raised hands, uh, we will conclude our presentation session here. And uh, yeah, Nikhil, do you have any doubts? No, sir, thank you. Regarding the task and allotment and anything relating to task? No, sir, not it. Okay. So I believe since uh, no one has any doubt, so we will end our presentation session here. Good yes. evening and thank you. Thank you. Sir. Right.